Hello world and welcome to Nana Firma TV. Today on Nana Firma TV, we're going to have a conversation about, about laws, especially the laws here in Ghana, about citizens' law. As a citizen of Ghana, you, you, do have to, you do have to know what your rights are. So today I have with me with Esquire Oscar Asante Indro. Esquire Oscar, thank you for having us on Nana Firma TV. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for being your guest too. Absolutely, you're welcome. So, out of the debate, one of the questions that I'm I'm going to ask you is, when we say that citizens' rights here in Ghana, what are citizens' rights? Well, the 1992 Constitution confers rights on every individual. Once you are a citizen, mm -hmm. you are entitled to certain rights. And that is enshrined in Chapter 5 of our 1992 Constitution. Mm -hmm. The fundamental human rights is enshrined. It's an entrenched process in our Constitution as far as the 1992 Constitution is concerned. Let me be quick to add that in spite of the fact that you have a right as a citizen, mm -hmm. rights confers on you responsibilities. So they can't be right without corresponding responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So the basic tenets of the 1992 Constitution as far as Chapter 5, which is basically on the fundamental human rights of a certain one, is the right of the individual. And within that right, inherent or implicit in it, is an equal responsibility of the citizen. Okay. So you marry the two. Got you. I understand. So now we are gonna come down a, a little bit to to the local language. You know, say yakase a writer and mini as an sekasa not for right, but mini msa say as ubi a oye Ghana citizen nano owo adebia e we say ye mahun kwan ana say wan kasa won so so be mahun kwan tin say ye kasa say obi e wo citizen right na citizen right no ni pakro no e dia ba dia yeah eh say the osibu say no putokase or in the english language na me tree mo no ye kasa right ni pe bia wo ye citizen ana say ye wo wotu o man bi ana say wanya what may yet or mind may be by way of a naturalization? Mm -hmm. What go through certain procedure, no may yet or man be money? Young fans say, The be a young or a brutal US, UK, or the European countries, mm -hmm. but be been to know by our rear, by whatever, no, put me by yet crumb honey. And once I will yet to me money, my main can is a crumb honey. Who oh, enjoy sad rights? Not as who be a ye won or ho. Okay. And together, I can't be a citizen. A quiet person, a fast or a quiet citizenship by birth. Mm -hmm. Oh, my no papa. A ye gana for. And I ye be o wo gana. And now to me go through naturalization processes. Mm -hmm. Now be a gana near. Right, you know, ye near me be a. Because of say we what be ye gane ni and now be manti mu ni uti me tu aba uti me bi biya tse gane ni no you are entitled and I say aye a kwenye bi a mau okay a mau enjoy and a unya home and faso okay but and faso ono so no a huwa su di bi su ye den a wo ho right no a wo limits okay uti me exceed the a mrani chewo say. We are citizens, we're right, we're right. Mm -hmm. We're right, and then so no. Mm -hmm. There is a ceiling. Okay. Responsibility being so, okay. Edda also. Unti me moro emran so. Okay, mm -hmm. I understand. So, can we have an example of some of the rights as a citizen of Ghana? What are some of the rights? You can give me about three or four that are maybe the most major ones that maybe perhaps a lot of us or a lot of Ghanaians do not know these rights. The first and foremost right is that under the constitution, if you're a citizen of Ghana, you, you, you have an absolute right under the constitution to enjoy all the largesse as the constitution prescribes. Mm -hmm. So you have right to education, 
right to employment, irrespective of race, gender, education, you shouldn't be discriminated against. Okay. You have economic rights, you have educational rights, you have the right to vote, mm -hmm. you have the right to participate in electoral process mm -hmm. and all that. These are basic okay. fundamental human okay. rights when you are a citizen, okay. you are entitled. So these are the common rights that I would say that the common man is aware of. So, you know, what are some of the rights that maybe a common man here in Ghana might not be aware of it? that you know I have this right let's say let me give you an example maybe for example in marriage you know if if either or whether the man or the woman goes through some type of abuse is there any right or is there any law that governs that person sure here in Ghana sure okay we have the domestic violence act okay the domestic violence act basically is about the fact that you can subject your spouse and I'm using the word spouse in legal terms. Mm -hmm. People think that when we talk about spousal abuse, it is almost always a man subjecting right. a lady. It's either way around. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that how many men will gather that courage, master that courage to walk into the offices and of the domestic, my that my, my, my wife beat me yesterday. Right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe somebody I'm in a relationship with subjected mm -hmm. me to inhumane treatment mm -hmm. and for that matter i want most men feel shy the sensitization has been from our orientation right. and indoctrination right from our cultural settings and all that we have been indoctrinated to believe that it is only the man who is the boisterous type right who is capable of abusing, abusing. Gotcha. but mm -hmm. the domestic violence act mm -hmm. defined abuse as Generic. Right. It is not gender specific. Okay. So it is either way around. But in our cultural setting, you know, elsewhere, the moment you touch a lady and whatever, when a, a report is made, the next minute you are picked up and yes. all that. And we draw most of these are laws elsewhere. But the Domestic Violence Act has this mystified that. But the education has mm -hmm. not gone that far for men to also know their rights, that even by verbal abuse from your spouse or somebody you are in a relationship with, it is you, your right to report right, it. Right, your right to report it. Wow, thank you very much for bringing light to that. So now we'll, we'll move a little bit from the human rights and then um, something as environmental rights. For instance, I'm, I'm Cobra River. I believe that um, um, Cobra River is going through an extenuating um, environmental injustice and I feel like there is nothing that is being done about it. Or am I, am I crazy, am I out of my mind, you know, trying to say that uh, um, Cobra River and you know, all the other places are not going through any environmental injustice? Femma, you are not, you are not crazy about anything. Oh. <laughs> you know, Ghana has so many laws to deal with whatever perennial problems we have. But our problem is implementation of the laws. All the laws have been passed. Like I talked about the Domestic Violence Act. Mm -hmm. When it comes to environment, we have the EPA Act, Environmental Protection Agency Act, mm -hmm. which is supposed. So our problem is not the laws. The laws have been promulgated. Mm -hmm. But to have the political will and the will with all to make sure that those laws are put into fruition, are implemented, and culprits are brought to book. You are very much right, not only on Cobra, even in our small communities. You see people burning in things indiscriminately, emitting a whole lot of pollution here and there, which is so inimical to the health of the inhabitants and occupants within the catchment area and all that. And to a large extent, look at this, uh, what do you call the Galamse issues, you mentioned on Cobra, mm -hmm. the way they are polluting our rivers, we're supposed to safeguard our environment. Right. If we don't take care, a time will come. Oh, our environment will become extinct, and we are due to extension. We are due to extension, you are, you, are, you are definitely right. And I'm glad that you mentioned something of, you know, Galamse. So Galamse is, it's an I illegal way of, of mining gold. So, 
I will not even ask the question why there is so much galam say, but I will ask that when it comes to business laws, what is what is business law? One, what is business law in Ghana? And two, what are the process of a business law? Like, let's say, for instance, if I want to mine gold in Ghana, what is, and if I want to do it the proper way, not, not the, you know, the gallum same way, but if I want to do that, what are the laws that governs me for me to have a permit, uh, for me to mine gold? What are the protocols or what are the laws that, that I have to go through that process to require that business? It all boils back to what I earlier said. We have the Minerals and Mining Act that is supposed to regulate the acquisition permit. I mean, background checks about who wants to get what license to prospect what mineral. But are we going by it? So, it was not for nothing I started off by saying that Ghana has all the laws. But our problem is, are we implementing the laws? So the backs stop on the political class. Because we are all here, the political leaders are interested in who minds where, who gets licensed. If you are not my party member, if you are not a financier of my party, they will frustrate you. Meanwhile, all the protocols, as you mentioned, the due diligence and the procedures you are supposed to go through mm -hmm. are all lined up in the Mining and the Minerals Act. But at the end of the day, who do you know? I see. And needless to say this, and let me be maybe a devil's advocate a little bit. So there are foreigners also that comes in and do these minings. And I know that once again there are laws, you know, but then they're not being implemented. So when foreigners come and then they want to do improper or they want to do mining, do they go through this procedure or because they are they are foreigners, we, we give them, you know, a priority and which and I, I think at times it is, we give them a priority or I don't know whether it's out of fear or whatever, but um, why is it that foreigners come in you know not just the the people that lives here but why is it that foreigners have this upper hand and are able to to um, to practice improper mining here in ghana there have been times a number of top guys the top echelons of ghana immigration service have been interdicted for issuing illegal licenses to these foreigners, especially the Chinese. Mm. And they keep on operating on illegal basis. By the end of the day, they are interdicted and nothing is said. It's, it's a public document. A number of them have come to the courts. The government cannot free the ostrich. Right. That is not a way. They are very much aware of whatever is happening. For which on which basis some top immigration officers have been interdicted, but what goes beyond interdiction? So the Chinese and the other Asians with impunity being wow. Wow. exploiting our leniency. Right. And with with your experience in practicing law and you know, and, and this is very tough, you know, when, when you have a people, and especially when you have leaders that are not able to lead that example, do you think that, you know, at some point, do you, do you think that there's going to be a turnaround whereby these laws are going to be implemented? And if they need to be implemented, but with your experiences and what you've seen, do you think that there's going to maybe perhaps in the next five years, ten years, there's going to be a time where these things are going to turn around and there's going to be an implementation of these laws? I will start from when I was in the law school. One of our lecturers, whose name, for some reasons I don't want to disclose, yes. told us that not until we have a leader who is not interested in a second term, all our laws will go down the drain. We need a leader who will take the bull by the horn and say that, look, I'm going to take tough decisions. Come what may, whether you vote for me or not, I don't care. 
But once all our leaders come in and they are interested in the second term. And back to your question, there should be a development agenda, a blueprint that successive governments cannot shy away from. But not until this MPP, NDC dichotomy, you always come back to square one. Wow. This one comes to power, he implements his own decisions, favors, party cronies, and all that the expense of our days. So you can have people with all the expertise and all that, but because they don't, because of the nuances of our political agenda, agenda insults, insinuations, and aspirations, mm. they shy away from public office. And you will get incompetent square pegs in the round hole wow. ruling the affairs of this country. Yeah, in, in as much as as truthful as it is, it's very hard to swallow and you know it, it, it saddens my heart. Yes, please. Go when ahead. I was a student, mm -hmm. and even after my student days, people wow. close to me they know my political persuasion. But for some time now, I relaxed and started criticizing my own political party. And they tagged me as an anti-somebody. But for me, fidelity to the nation first. Yes. At the end of the day, we are Ghanaians first. Yes. Politics is just a divisive factor. Right. At the end of the day, when those networks are good, when there are good health facilities, when the environment that you raise and cobra and uh, whatever are all, we all start to benefit. And we shouldn't think about our generation. The generation yet unborn. Yes. What legacy, what largesse are we leaving behind? For them to say that, oh, our fathers, our grandfathers, our great grandfathers. What footprint did they leave for us? Wow, wow. Well, so I'm going to come back to the human. Um, laws here because it's very dear to, to me. <laughs> um, so, mention some of the um, some of the health laws here that we have in in Ghana. So, I, I will give an example. Growing up in in, in Ghana, um, I've I've seen and heard lots of women that go into labour and then do not come back home, and that then has been something that has been very consistent as a little girl in Ghana and I remember that when I was about a, a teenager I said to to my father in heaven that I hope that I did not live here in Ghana when I am married to give birth to my child because I know that when I do I'm going to die Chances. there is that chance that I, I am going, going to die and it, it, it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't be when a woman goes to the labor ward it shouldn't be a, a, a Medical, you know, we know life that, and death matter. right? You know, there are certain things that are life and death, but as in a, a mother going into labor, but it's something that is very constant here in our country. Are there laws that governs, you know, as citizens of Ghana, you know, let's say for instance, things as simple as clem clemencia, clemencia, which is like a blood high blood pressure when a pregnant woman, you know, women that get pregnant. Which elsewhere shouldn't be. Right, you know, which should be like a, a minimum kind of uh, um, uh, uh, effect, but then people die from it, or you know, as, as let, there's a case example where, uh, these are personal examples that I'm bringing up, whereby a woman will go toward and say to the nurse that, I think I'm ready to push, and the nurse is like, no, you're not ready to push, and then by the time the nurse comes back, woman has already pushed her baby, baby is dead, maybe mother also is also dead. Are there laws, you know, in such cases that protects these citizens? And if they are, what are the laws? Uh, Freema, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy you brought this on for. Thank you. You see, I was privileged to have worked with the National Labor Commission as the legal affairs officer for six years. And this was one of the common issues that came up. Whilst I was soliciting for the National Labor Commission, I represented the National Labor Commission from the High Court to the Supreme Court on a number of cases. It all boils down to negligence on the part of our medics. So from the st starting point I told you, as for the laws, they are there. But Ghana, 
the family nyame syndrome mm enye hwe mm the nyame pe no wo ye mm so the person who is supposed your wife has suffered such a blight and then you are saying that oh nyame ne de ma nyame no gie the busy bi ay nyame akwan should it be so i'm happy you brought it into the fall that you wouldn't want to grow up here and then and God listening to your prayers he did so it is about the person who is affected variably or invariably to push the law by how many people are prepared to even affording the services of a lawyer to take up such issues it's hard that is the problem it's hard Medical negligence is one of the most least exploited as far as our legal framework is concerned. Wow. Dr. B. Timi, your oppression, we just implement, we need to be more calm. People have died out of it. They have damaged wounds and all that. But in order to be voice, who am I? Well, there are instances whereby, you know, where you would you be stopped by a police and um, the police would, you know, get into your car, you know, start and grab your keys, you know, and even even if when you're at fault. So let's say let's assume that the person is at fault. You know, is it is it the police rights because they're police? Is it their right to come into your car and then search, take up your keys, and and just do searching? Is it is it is it part of the Ghana law? Per the fundamental laws of the land, that is the constitution. It prescribes how arrests or how a police officer should conduct himself or herself. The Police Act also prescribed. The Criminal and Other Offenses Act, Act 29, 1960, also laid down some of these things. No police officer, irrespective of whatever, has the right to take your key and jump into your car. But well, we see it here. Yes. What, why is that? Sheer show of power. Before even a police officer stops you for on suspicion of committing a crime or having committed a crime, right. let's say a motor offense or something, mm -hmm. you have to show to the person that I'm um, officer so so and so. And mind you, it is not any officer in uniform who can ask for your driver's licenses. That is what a lot of drivers don't know. It is only an officer of the rank of inspector and above. A constable, a sergeant, a corporal cannot ask for your license. Here in Ghana. That is so. That is the mm. position of the law. So the person who has the right to ask you to produce your driver's license is an officer of the rank of an inspector or above. Any officer short of this rank has no rights. Wow. Yes. But yet the people are not aware of and... For lack of knowledge, my right. people perish. Yes, Who's here yes, exactly. says say so. Mm. And then, even if you are driving without licenses, and he asks you to provide your licenses or produce your licenses, you have 24 hours within which to, to do so. Right. Mm. So I always advise drivers don't ever give your original license to any officer make sure you've made a copy from the original mm -hmm. when they demand it just tell them you don't have your original license with you because there's no law that requires that the original. wherever you are driving you have to have the original say carry your license along wow. the law does not say original license okay so once you are able to, the problem comes when within 24 hours you are not able to provide the original. And when you provide or you produce the original and it doesn't tally, 
with what you provided. Mm -hmm. That one you have committed another crime. Okay. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's it. Okay. If as citizens of, of Ghana, so if they are not able to, because I know that affording a lawyer here in Ghana can be expensive. If they are not able to afford a lawyer, are there any agencies that can help in, in you know, citizens that are not able to afford lawyers? Are there certain laws like that? Because I know that where other countries, um, whereby you're not able to afford a lawyer, States. the state does provide you one. Do we have such thing or such, you know, policies or regulations here in Ghana? Yes. They are. There is this legal aid scheme. Okay. Which has branches across the various regions. So, uh, some lawyers are attached to the legal aid. The government highly subsidizes the fees and pay them some token. So if you think that whatever amount of fees the lawyer is charging is way beyond your capability, you can always turn to the legal aid scheme for assistance. Beyond that, I have done a lot of pro bono cases. When I say pro bono, Don't sometimes you. somebody comes to you and he has to pay you a good case. But the person cannot even offer a person. You do it and they leave you me. The blessing comes in another way. I can't speak for all of us. Right. I'm not saying that all of us should do pro bono. Right. If you of do course, pro you have to all eat. the time, yes. of course. <laughs> so once in a while, when you find out that somebody has a very good case, but in circumstances, he doesn't have the financial clout and muscle to show that the legal mm -hmm. responsibilities, why not mm -hmm. individual on our individual level, some of us yes. 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 Right. It's been brought to my attention that at times juveniles are being prosecuted as adults and these things are done when they get taken in at the police stations and the police are the ones that, you know, change their age for reasons why I'm not even sure why they want juveniles to be prosecuted as as adults. Are there laws that governs these juveniles and have they been vindicated? Are some of them been vindicated from, from these practices? Yes, we have what we call the Juveniles Act. Okay. So if may, you know, every day boils down to act, act, law. Right. Law. We have it. Mm -hmm. But the institutions and agencies that are supposed to see to the implementation of this very act that are passed by parliament, mm. they are sleeping. So you can look at somebody, fine. Sometimes appearance can be very deceptive. Right. But how can you just look at somebody and say that you are 18? Not even when the person is not represented by a lawyer, and then you cook up an age for him or her. Wow. And the most unfortunate aspect of it is that in most of the cases, they are not even reminded of their rights of having access to counsel, and that there should be an independent witness. And in most cases, the independent witnesses are also police officers, <laughs> their own colleagues. That if you don't say you are 18, you put you in there out of fear and without legal representation, the person just is there, is, waste. is there a reason why they want to prosecute them as adults? Sometimes, some of these complainants who report some of these juveniles are well to do and influential people in the family, uh, in the society. I see who want to demand their pound of flesh. Okay. I did a case where the lady, the victim, the support defilement victim was well above 16, as at the time of the alleged commission of the crime. Wow. But they stated her age as 14. Wow. So during cross-examination, upon incessant cross-examination of the father, who was the complainant, he proved that three different birth certificates 
That was where I got salvation from. Wow. The suspect, the accused person. Wow. They do it all the time. Wow. But in some cases, if you are lucky and you get a very reasonable in the judge, he will look at the totality of all the evidence and then he quash whatever sentence or whatever charge that has been brought before him. Wow. Yeah. I see. I want to thank you for the good work that you're doing here in Ghana. Continue to do that. God bless you richly. God bless you for taking care of these citizens. So let the dollars also flow. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the dollars, ship some to us so that we can pick up more of those pro bono cases for the underprivileged. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. You and I will be that is just on the light you know, Absolutely. So, Esquire o Oscar is here. You know, if you have any cases now. Citizens of Ghana, you do know what your rights are. And once again, this is not to, you know, shout out or do a promotion. I have my rights, I have my right. But indeed, you do have your right to certain limits. And as he mentioned, you know, as a, you have responsibility also, which you abide by the law in working with your rights. So once you, you Google his name, Esquire Oscar Asante Indru, you will find him. If you need any help, reach out to him information will, will be there on, on Google how to reach out to him. I want to thank you once again. This is a very special interview for me here on Nana Prima TV. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you know the trail. Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.